Okay, in this video, we're going to look into running interrupts on a microcontroller. And the microcontroller that we're going to use is a PIC microcontroller, which is on my scamp board, which is mounted on my breadboard. Now, all microcontrollers can only run one task at a time. So we use interrupts to make it look like that we're running more than one task at a time. So when the interrupt is triggered, it's going to run a small piece of code called the interrupt service routine. Now, this code is very small. It's very fast because we're actually stealing a time slice from the main program. So our interrupt service routine could be toggling a GPIO, incrementing a counter, updating a flag, something that's going to run very fast. Now if you look at my scamp board, I have a, a blinking LED right here. That's my main program. And I have a push button switch and another LED. Now when I press the push button switch, it's going to trigger an interrupt, which will toggle this LED. So as I press it, it's running an interrupt service routine, which is toggling that LED. It's taking a time slice from a main program, which is my blinking LED, which you can see it's not being affected because my interrupt service routine is very fast. So in this video, we're going to look at a real-world application where we're using interrupts on a microcontroller. Okay, I'm out in my blueberry field. I'm checking up on my blueberries. You can see they're still blossoming. Now we've had a cold spring, so the blueberries are going to be late, and all the farmers are going to be affected. And you can see that black line that's my irrigation line. It's a drip irrigation line. It runs the whole length of the row of blueberries. And the water is treated with liquid fertilizer and, and it drips down. And we used to have the irrigation line near the ground, but at nighttime the coyotes would come and chew on it. I don't know what's something to do with that plastic. So we had to move the irrigation lines up to the top. So next we're going to go into the irrigation hut. And there's, there's the tank that has the uh, liquid fertilizer. And it's fed down into a pump, and there's the pump and the motor, and above that is the controller. That's a timer controller. And there's the plumbing that feeds the water to the outside world. And there's two solenoids you see there. They're, that's how we turn on the water. They're, they're valves. Uh, they're controlled by the controller. So I have to have some way to detect very heavy rain so I can turn off the irrigation system. So we'll need a, a rain gauge and a microcontroller. Okay, here's my tipping bucket rain gauge. So as it's raining, the raindrops will be collected in this rectangular area, the inlet, and then the water will funnel down to the center and drip out the bottom. And as it drips out the bottom, it's going to fall into this tipping bucket. So the rain will fill up this bucket on the right, and then when it's full, it's going to tip over and drain out the water to the right-hand side, and the rain will continue following into the left-hand side, and when that fills up, it's going to tip the bucket to the left and drain the water to the left hand side. Now as it's tipping there's a magnet right here and there's a reed switch behind this uh, plastic wall so each tip we're going to get a pulse coming out of this cable. And that's going to be fed into our microcontroller and that's going to trigger our interrupt. So I want to be able to measure the intensity of the rain so when the intensity is greater than five millimeters per hour I want to be able to turn off my irrigation system and when it drops below that I'll turn back on the irrigation system. So each tip of the, of the bucket represents 0.2794 millimeters of rain and from that we could count how many how many pulses coming out of here and I could actually calculate the intensity so I'll hook it up to my microcontroller and I can show you how this tipping action will trigger the interrupt okay I replaced the push button switch that was on my breadboard with an RG11 breakout board and I plugged my rain gauge into the jack so now the pulses from the rain gauge are going to be fed into this chip here. It's a CD4093 Schmidt trigger NAND gate. And that's set up to debounce the reed switch that's inside the rain gauge. So we have a nice clean signal. We won't get multiple interrupts and multiple counts. So the output of the debounce circuit is fed into GPIO pin 8 of the SCAMP 3 board. That's our uh, interrupt input. So now when I tip the bucket, I have it set up. So every time I tip the bucket, we're going to toggle this LED here. So I'll tip the bucket. So you can see it's, it's toggling and it's pretty reliable. So no matter when the bucket tips, because it's an interrupt, it will be counted. So now we can count how many tips and we can calculate the intensity of the rain. Okay, here's the code running on the scamp board and it's written in flash forth. So this is how we write an interrupt service routine using forth and it's very simple. So the first thing I do, I create a variable called tip.count. That's going to keep track of my tip counts. Next I build my ISR, my interrupt service routine, and I call it my ISR. 
So the ISR is written in fourth, so write some very simple fourth code. Don't put any time delays in there. So this is all the fourth code here. So you write your fourth code in between these two words. These are bookends, okay? So you put your code in between these two words, and this word is return from interrupt. So if you look at the fourth code, this line here is going to toggle GPIO pin 10. That's connected up to the LED, so the LED will toggle. And this is going to increment the tip count, so it's going to add one to it. So that's going to fire every time uh, interrupt uh, is, is triggered, my ISR. So if we go down to the next word, it's called enable interrupt. So here we make pin 10, GPIO pin 10 and output. Then we take the execution address of my ISR and we put that address into vector 8. We write it into vector 8 so when it's triggered it's going to go to vector 8, it's going to look up that execution address, it's going to run it. It's going to run our, our, our code. And this is going to enable the interrupt. So that's, we run that word and then our, our interrupt is ready to go. So we press the button now, we press our push button and then we could uh, run dot tips. That's going to tell you how many tips, how many push buttons you pressed. And you could clear it with uh, clear dot tips. So that's it. That's, that's all that you need there to, for an uh, interrupt service routine. So you could run this code and you could build your own code in here. Just put your own fourth code in here in between these two words for your own ISR. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer. It's connected to my scamp board. And I have my fourth operating system up and running, my flash fourth. When I hit enter on the keyboard, you see I get an OK prompt, so it's running fourth. I also have the interrupt running in the background. So when I tip the bucket, it'll toggle the LED. It'll also count a counter. I have a counter set up. It'll increment a counter. So if you look at the counter, Go dot tips, counter is zero. So I'll tip the bucket five times. So one, two, three, four, five. Look at the tips. We got five tips. So even though the fourth operating system was running, the interrupt in the background counted the five tips. And I could clear, I could clear the tips. That's a counter. So we could start all over again. So I'll look at tips. It's zero. If I do it again, I'll do uh, I'll do two tips. One, two. Look at tips. So we keep track of the tips. So we have an interrupt running in the background. So we'll always count the number of tips of the bucket rain gauge, and then we can calculate the intensity of the rain. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard, and you can see the two main components. We have the scamp board and we have a CD4093 Schmidt trigger NAND gate. Now the scamp board is powering the 4093 with 3.3 volts and the switch on the very left could either be the push button switch or the read switch in the rain gauge and the switch is debounced with this circuitry here so we have a very clean signal going to pin 8 a high to low transition which will trigger the interrupt. Now once the interrupt is triggered we're going to toggle the LED on, on pin 10 this LED here and we're going to increment the tip counter. Okay, here's the code that I'm actually going to run to test the rain intensity, and the program is called rain question mark. So the first thing I do, I, I clear the tip counter, so I set it to zero, enable the interrupt, then I run a, a timer for six minutes. Now during the six minutes, it's going to keep track of how many tips from the rain gauge, and after six minutes, it's going to check the count, and if the count is two or greater than, then it knows it's the intensity is five millimeters an hour or or more it's going to turn off the LED in my case it will be a relay so it will shut off my irrigation system if it's one tip or less it'll keep the relay on and the irrigation system will stay on so this is going to loop so every every six minutes it's going to check the intensity and either turn on or off the irrigation system now I have six minutes commented out because I don't want to wait six minutes when I'm testing so I have 15 seconds so in 15 seconds, if I tip the rain gauge twice or more, the LED will go out. And if I tip the rain gauge once, the LED will stay on. That's how I test it uh, on the bench. Okay, next I'm going to test my rain intensity program. So it's my rain question mark program. So I'll run it, and when I run it, you'll see the LED come on. Right there, that means my irrigation system is up and running. So now I have 15 seconds. So I'll do two tips. So one, two, 
Now we'll wait, it will test that and it will say it's over five millimeters per hour and it shut off my my LED which shuts off my irrigation system. So I'll do one, one tip. Now after 15 seconds you'll see one tip and that will be below five millimeters per hour and my LED comes back on my irrigation is now back on. Okay so that was my little tutorial on how to write interrupts on a scamp board. Now you could go back to the simple program with the push button so when you hit the push button you could activate the interrupt and modify the code, modify the interrupt code to your liking so you could get a better understanding of how to write interrupts in fourth.